is Valentine's Day. So he could bother around and running. These lyrics that people get confused. Really, Krishna's pulling pranks on Radharani, Radharani. But that is the ultimate Valentine to, um, to think of just how much affection Krishna is feeling for Srimati Radharani and the same for him. So we've got to be enthusiastic. <laughs> it's, it's a good time. So anyway, I'll tell you, I was, uh, I've been cleaning out my closets, you know, and like things and things like that. And I found a, a letter and it had my name written on it. And I said, oh my God, that must be a letter from somebody chastising me for something I did wrong or something I was obnoxious about, you know, in a restaurant or in one of the programs. <laughs> I really thought like that. And so I opened it up and I'm going to share with you. They say some nice things about me sometimes, but it's not about that. Um, you know, when people are humble, they say a lot of nice things, but ultimately there's some things for us here. So this letter is, is dated August um, the 20th, 2009. It says, my dear Hayashwar Prabhu, please accept my humblest obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Last Sunday's job position has changed me and has charged me up even more than usual. I am generally a shy guy when it comes to expressing gratitude in public. So this was the best way for me to reach out and tell you how grateful I am for your mentorship and timely guidance that I have been receiving in the past months. At the time you stopped in last, at the time you stopped, stepped in last month, I feel I was at a make or break juncture. For a fact, I know that since then, with the causeless mercy of Krishna and his devotees, as I have been, as I have been tread, treading the path of spiritual pursuit with some enthusiasm and sincerity, now I am beginning to realize why devotee association is so important for someone with a development agenda and limited time frame. We would all like to know Krishna better but we also realize that life is short. Hence, as you say, not only should we be sincerely desirous, but also grab all opportunities to associate. Rest will, the rest will automatically follow. How can I not be thankful for you for letting me join your program at this used to be Yoga for Life? We have created such a wonderful platform for devotees to come together and constitute the magical portion of association that inspires me to engage more in devotional service. When I hear you talk about Krishna, I tell you, you gotta get past some of this stuff. I am inspired to read more about him. When I see the youngsters at Yoga for Life engaging in services to the best of their abilities, I feel inspired to do some service myself. More recently, I am inspired to join the early morning japa sessions. Prabhu, I feel really selfish many times as I see myself only take and take from everyone. The generous portions of love, compassion, knowledge, and prasadam are deeply appreciated. I pray that over time, Krishna may make, spiritually, may make me spiritually strong and sincere enough to distribute the same as appropriate. After all, that's what we're here for. I certainly need your blessings. I've been meaning to express my feelings for a while. So this feels appropriate. Otherwise, it is like wrapping a gift, but not giving it. Hare Krishna. <laughs> I thought that was so funny because I was thinking I was going to get just <laughs> something that I did. And I did, I did a lot of crazy things. but. When I hear devotees speak about how much they find in devotee association, when I could hear the gratitude and the development of a devotee, then my happiness, just my heart begins to swell because I see that the little endeavors we make 
they, they, they have an effect. And we're doing our true work. Our true work is to snatch from the jaws of death. And Maya is like death or spiritually infused. So snatch from those jaws another devotee and, and lead that devotee to the lotus, to the cooling shade of the lotus feet of Krishna. So it's so enthusing. And um, we used to have brunch here, you know, for, for, um, for the Sunday morning japa. One of the cooks would make scrambled tofu and pancakes and smoothies and so many things. <laughs> and Drona used to work really hard, you know, he, he used to do so much service back then. It's, and now Krishna stole him. Lord Jagannath is like that. He graduated and he gets to do service for Lord Jagannath directly. So it's, although it's a humble endeavor, at some point I have to um, find a way to open the Bhakti Garden where we can associate and experience the sweetness of the Panchatatra. Um, so yeah, anyway, I, 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 I always try to think of what we'll talk about when I first come on. And when I found the letter, I thought I would share it. Um, anyway, so what are we going to do th this weekend? Um, Mother, I think we have, a, I haven't looked at the book, but last week I think we have a lot to go over. Maybe we have to do it in part. Um, oh. There's the verse that I can't, couldn't remember when I was talking last week. I take the palm to mix them on. No. Oh, this is, this is a sweet one. There was two verses that Tula Prabhupada used to speak of. This was just your home, Anubra, Anubra. I told you, I can't remember them. But anyway, um, so let's hear some of this and maybe there's something that we can take out of it. Maybe there's something we can share, um, we can discuss. So, Mother Shobha Rade. So she, she did, she, she may not be yeah, able to go on the whole time. She may not um, be here? Yeah, she has somebody coming, a contractor coming to her house. So she it's okay. Might. But she's she's on, but she may not be able to talk. Um, That's okay. Well, I'll do some different. I'll let Brin Dominic read. Is Mother um, uh, Chintamani here today? No. Anyway. no. Okay. So I'll get started a little bit. Guidelines for all devotees. Whew. More on tolerance. In what manner should devotees wishing to advance? perform their devotional service, including chanting their japa? What should their attitude be when relating to happiness and distress, conditions that tend to visit the mind repeatedly and disturb it? Neophyte practitioners are often carried on waves of materialistic feelings that agitate the mind and make it difficult to concentrate on the holy name. Shlo Prabhupada calls the following verse to guideline for all devotees, that tenu kampam shushamikshama no anjana evatma kreta kritam vipakam vidvag vapur beer vividan namaste chiveta yo bhakti pade sadaya bhak. My dear Lord, one who earnestly waits for you to bestow your causeless mercy upon him all the while patiently suffering the reactions of his past misdeeds and offering you respectful obeisances with his heart, words, and body is surely eligible for liberation, for it has become his rightful claim. Bhagavatam 10.14.8. According to the general understanding of this verse, devotees should tolerate the disturbing reactions of their own misdeeds and remain fixed in devotion. They should also expect the Lord's glance of mercy and offer him their respectful obeisances with heart, words, and body. 
But Shulavishvanar Chakravarti Thakur offers a deeper understanding. He says that both happiness and distress are the results of bhakti. Happiness comes when bhakti is performed correctly. And suffering arises when devotees commit aparads offenses. However, both the sweet and the bitter results are simply Krishna's mercy. Quote, it is just like a father who sometimes makes his son drink milk, and sometimes the bitter juice is made from nim nimba leaves. The devotee thinks, I do not know, but the Lord, like a father, knows what is good and bad for me. Sometimes he embraces and kisses me, and sometimes he slaps me. I, his devotee, have no power at all over karma and time. He alone, by his mercy, makes me experience happiness and distress and makes me serve him. Such a devotee considers his situation in the same way King Prithu considered his when he said, Oh Lord, please bestow upon me whatever you think is best for me, like a father who doesn't wait for the son's demand, but who does everything for his son's benefit. Bhagavatam 4, 20, 31. In other words, the devotee should remain tolerant and steady in bhakti. Shulavishvanar Chakravati Thakur further explains further, as remaining alive is the cause of a good son receiving his inheritance. The devotee stand alive in this world with steadiness on the path of bhakti is the cause of his receiving freedom from samsara and service to the Lord. From Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur's commentary on Bhakti Rasam Rita Sindhu 12174. As long as we are living in this world, we have to expect disturbances, distractions, and tests of our tolerance and persistence. It therefore helps to keep this encouraging verse in mind when we are forced to cope with the difficulties. This verse offers a useful guide to keep us focused on the right understanding and give us steadiness in our nam bhajana. Wow, that's such a sweet verse. <laughs> I was thinking about that verse last week when we were talking about, about tolerance. We're going to read more, but humility, we know that we're supposed to be humble but we forget to understand that tolerance is right there too. And tolerance, it enables us to, to remain humble or to become humble because especially when we tolerate in the right frame of mind, seeing that the adversities that have happened in life, they, they, they're really a reaction to the things that I've done. And, and actually things should be worse for me, but Krishna is so kind, you know, by his, by his tight embrace, he's, he's caught me up. He's not allowing me to experience with so much pain, but even when the pain comes, I'm able to remember him. Let those calamities come again and again, because when they come, I can see your face again and again, Queen Kunti. So that, that, when our Krishna consciousness is moving in the right direction, during the good times, we remember Krishna. But during the bad times, we really remember Krishna. And we take shelter of Krishna. Draupadi, hands in the air, like I just don't care, you know? She was fighting, she's trying to grab that sari, trying to cover herself up. But at a certain point, Queen Draupadi thought, I can't do this. And she just threw her hands up in the air. Krishna, protect me. Krishna, save me. And, you know, at those, those heavy moments, then Krishna's there. Ultimately, he's our only shelter. You know, whether in smarnam and remembering Krishna and hearing his, his, and his, hearing his sweet, beautiful name, chanting it. However it comes, that remembrance of Krishna, 
I love here. I'm here in Prabhupada, you know, I because we see Prabhupada is so much larger than life, but Prabhupada showed us the experience of a person who is Krishna conscious. He had the he he felt the pain. He felt the ecstasies, and when he was coming aboard the job, when he's on the Jaladuta coming here. Uh, and he said to Krishna, the day that remembrance of you came to me in a very nice way. I had a very longing for you and I called out to you. This is real. You're my very dear friend and I need your association so much. Yearning. So that, that, that smartum, that remembrance of Krishna, that feeling the need for Krishna. And we tolerate. Imagine when it gets worse, you know, she went to ride around and she just starts talking so crazy. <laughs> and she starts missing Krishna, you know. She sees the bumblebee and she just starts chastising the bumblebee. You know, you know, I know, you know, you're the unreliable servant of an unreliable master. Just come here to take the sweetness and go just like your master, you know. So it's it's nice. And that's one level, that's a high level. But for ourselves, you know, right where we're at, we have some debt experience that, you know, when we get caught up in all the worldly activities and we have responsibilities, but as we get caught up in them, then we move further and further away from our true identity our true purpose, our true relationship with Krishna. And so oftentimes the adversities, they bring us back to the reality. We feel a little pain and immediately like a child, there's some fear, some pain. Child runs to his parents, wants to take shelter, mommy, you know? And so when we feel some pain, we take shelter of Krishna. We tolerate it, understanding, that, you know, this is just still Krishna. And if we still see Krishna like that, then we're going to be fine. But tolerance is, you know, I look at tolerance most of the time as just, here's my test to get, <laughs> you know. You think you're getting so humble, and then the kid just stomps on your foot. <clears throat> ah! Want to snatch that kid, but you can't snatch that kid. So you have to tolerate. And, um, Anyway, so many other ways, but the main thing is to, to, if we stay humble and and look at this as the Lord's mercy, he's minimized our pain, then liberation too becomes our rightful claim. We keep our consciousness connected with Krishna like that. And there's so many stories you read and you see how those devotees patiently wait for Krishna they know he's coming, you know. They feel so safe. There's pain, but they, they feel safe. Okay, come on, Jonah, we're going to move on. Three most important rules. Um, Does anyone else want to read? Yes, I'll read, Hari. Okay, who said that? Is that Jay Z? Uh, John. Okay. Yes, sir. yes. Let's, let's, let's go. Basins. Three most powerful rules A, chant with a feeling of connection and eagerness. While chanting, we should maintain the mood expressed in this wonderful prayer. May my mind always be eager to see you, just as unfledged birds cannot live without their mother's presence, as hungry calves anxiously wait to drink their mother's milk, and as a wife remains absorbed in thoughts of her husband when he is away from home. Srimad Bhagavatam 6.11.26 this text expresses a devotee's great eagerness to experience a relationship with Krishna and ultimately to serve him as a wife serves her husband. It is also refers to chanting with gratitude and appreciating the mercy we have already received. 
as expressed in the first two analogies. And it certainly expresses the key to advancing in Krishna consciousness, eagerness. B, contemplate the meaning of the mantra while chanting. The Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is Yugala Mantra, a mantra where the divine couple is directly addressed. Srila Prabhupada informed the world of the root meaning of the Maha Mantra, a meaning that includes all other meanings. My dear Srimati Radharani, my dear Krishna, please engage me in your service. In the beginning of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, we first addressed the integral energy of Krishna, Hare. Thus we say, O Radharani, O Hare, O energy of the Lord. When we address someone in this way, he usually says, yes, what do you want? The answer is, please engage me in your service. This should be our prayer. Srila Prabhupada teachings of Lord Kapila, chapter 14, purport 2, verse 32. At other times, he sh- at other times he told us that the maha that the mantra is simply a prayer for acceptance. In his master work, Sri Chaitanya Shiskamrita, Srila Bhaktivinoda Kaur recommends that we use Srila Gopinath Guru Goswami's, oh, sorry, Srila Gopala Guru Goswami's meditations while chanting. Careful analysis of these short meditations reveal that they are intended to help us achieve the different levels of devotional service as enumerated by Srila Rupa Goswami. Such prayers and meditations also prove that chanting is the practice by which devotees are guided from initial faith, shraddha, to pure love of God, prema. How do we use these meditations? We may chant our rounds and progress slowly from one meditation to the next. There are no hard and fast rules as to how to use them. Perhaps we will go from one meditation to the next each time we begin a round. Perhaps we alter the meditations every two or three or four rounds. As we become more familiar with them, personal experience will dictate how to progress through the meditations, remain open to the dynamics of your own practice. Hare. So, so before we go further, I'm going to say something. Yes. So this is this is um the Gopala uh, Guru Gopala Goswami's <clears throat> explanation on the Maha Mantra, and it's and it's good, and it's and it's explained a little clearly. To chant Jampa like this may become a little challenging for, for you uh, to try to stay focused. It, it depends on where you're at. But the main thing is that Maharaj explained that Prabhupada gave a very simple explanation of, of the mantra, calling Radha and calling Krishna, please to be engaged in their service, you know, addressing them and then later asking them when they answered, hey, Radha, hey, Krishna, what do you want? Could could you give me something to do? Could you use me? Could you give me service like that? And so this this gives a, a, a deeper explanation of each name, of each word in the mantra. Um, and then there's other people who think to use the Shashastika prayers. But either way, my point to everyone is, it is nice to take in this knowledge, but everything that we get we have to use it, apply it as we can. In other words, if if it helps you to focus on, say, focus on your japa, fine. But other than that, you should chant your japa and try to hear the name. And in other words, don't reach for the for the moon and drop the things that you already have. So it's great to understand it. And my rides explained this. Um, if it helps you, you can use it. But other than that, you just simply chant and keep your mind focused. Are there any points about what we've gone over so far, what we've read, what we heard? 
Okay, so we're going to read. I, I just want to just make, make the point that, or ask you for the clarification. When we read about the 10 offenses. Um, we read about, we should not give some uh, mundane interpretation on the holy names of the Lord. Um, and I guess we're going to hear different explanations of, of meanings of the holy name um, given by different advanced devotees. Um, so in this way, um, how should we approach this? Like not, not as mundane interpretations, but as you know, spiritual insights into how to deeper approach the holy name. Could you maybe comment just on that? I, I, think, it's, I think it's just a more clear, extensive, deeper understanding of the mantra, what each name means. Ultimately, um, there are devotees who chant like this, but my, my point is this is also advanced stage. So if, if it doesn't work like that, it's, it's knowledge. It's knowledge it's, it's, uh, of, the, of the mantra. It's transcendental. It's wonderful. But I guess what I'm saying is it doesn't have to be applied in our practice. I, you know, if you can, you can. But if you don't, you, you can use a simple aspect of what Prabhupada gave you. But we should know. We should hear as much as possible about the mantra. But, you know, that, that's what I think the importance is. And as we feel as though we can take on more in our chanting, just like when, when I say chant, chant one mantra at a time. So, or to use the, the, the nine keys of Borijan Prabhu. So to first just sit down to chant Hare Krishna, and then to, you know, to make a determination that I'm just going to say one mantra at a time. I'm going to listen to Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Don't worry about what, what you messed up last night or the round you just, but you're going to stay focused. Keep your consciousness, keep your hearing, stay fixed on that. And then in that way, and then you make a determination. I'm just going to stay here. I'm going to sit down and chant four rounds. I'm not going to go move anything off the desk. I'm not going to do anything. So, and then you apply different keys. There's the key of humility. There's the key of vandanam. You know, that there's time. So, you know, what do I need to use as I'm chanting today? So if my mind's real crazy today and I'm chanting right now, I may need to say, oh, Krishna, oh, Radha, please help me. Fundanam may need to be used right now. I may need to start praying in order to get a hold of the reality that I'm dealing with Radha and Krishna right now. So from the gate, I may have to start praying. And as I continue, I may have to use the key of humility and say, you know, I'm so grateful. I may, I may begin to shriek and see how insignificant I am and um, my true position as a servant and feel grateful that Krishna is allowing me to chant his name. So in this way, I'm using different keys. So that in itself is work, you know. But what is the goal to stop the mechanical chanting, to stop offensive chanting, to be to be brought to bring ourselves into the light of staying with the mantra? So that is one aspect. So here is another. You see what I'm saying? And sometimes it may be difficult to to pray like this and and keep yourself focused. Um, so that's. I hope that's clear. What do you think, Drona? Yes. Yeah. No, that was good. I, I just wanted you to comment on that. that okay. Part. So let's go back. Come on, Jay Z. <laughs> Hare. Hey, Hare. Machintama. Hot. Va bhava bandanam mochaya. O Radha, please capture my heart and deliver me from the bondage of material life. Krishna, hey Krishna, 
Machitam Akarasaya. Oh, Krishna, please pull my heart to you. Hare. Hey, Hare. Sva Madhuryena Machitam Hara. Oh, Radha, please steal my heart with your sweetness. <laughs> Krishna. Hey, Krishna. Sva Bhakta Dvara Bhajana Jnana Denena Machitam Sodaya. O oh, Krishna, please purify my heart by giving me, through your devotees, knowledge of how to worship you. Krishna, hey Krishna, Nama Rupa Guna, Lila Disu, Man Nistam Kuru. O oh, Krishna, please make me steady in devotion to your name, form, qualities, pastimes, and such. Krishna, hey Krishna, Ruchir Bhavatu Me. Oh Krishna, please may I develop taste for you. Hare, hey Hare, Nidjaseva Yogam Mam Kuru. Oh Radha, please make me qualified for serving you. Hare, hey Hare, Sva Sevam Adisaya. Oh, Radha, please show me how to serve you. Hare. Hey, Hare, Sva Prastena Saha, Svabista Lilam Sravaya. Oh, Radha, please tell me of your cherished pastimes with your most beloved. Rama. Hey, Rama, Prastaya Saha. Svabista Lila Mam Svaya, Shravaya. O Rama, please tell me of your cherished pastimes with your most beloved. Hare. Hey, Hare, Sva Prastena Saha, Svabista Lilam Darsaya. O Radha, please show me your pastimes with your most beloved. Rama, hey Rama, Pastaya Saha, Svabista Lila Mam Darsaya. O Rama, please show me your pastimes with your most beloved. Rama, hey Rama, Nama Rupa Guna Lila Smarandisu Mam Yogena. O oh, Rama, please engage me in such services as remembering your name, form, qualities, and pastimes. Rama. Hey Rama, Tatramam, Nijaseva, Yogam, Yogyam, Kuru. O oh, Rama, please make me qualified for your service in this way. Hare. Hey, Hare, Mam. Svangir, Svangir Krita, Kritya Ramasya, Ramasva. Sorry, let me say that again. Hey, Hare, Mam, Svangir Krita, Rams, Ramasva. O Radha, accepting me as your own, take pleasure in me. Hare, hey, Hare, Maya Saha Ramasva. Oh, Hari, please enjoy with me. Gopala Karu Goswami. <clears throat> Gopala Guru Goswami had a confidential disciple, Dayan Chandra Goswami, who deepened the nectar of Mahamantra meditation by extracting the following sweet meditations from the ocean of Shastra. Asya Dayanam Yatta Tatraiva Dayayad Vrindavane Rame Gopa Gopir Ala Alan Krite Kandamba Padapa Chitaya 
Yamuna Jule Sitale Radhaya Satam Krishna Krishnam Vamsi Vandana Tat Param Tri Barga Lila Lilat Lilitam Devam Bak Bhaktatagaraha Karakam. The dhyana that accompanies this maha mantra is also found in the Sanat Kumara Samhita. Sri Krishna is sporting the cooling waters of the Yamuna or in the shade of the Kandamba tree in the beautiful Vrindavan forest. He is ornamented, surrounded by the cows and gopas, and is accompanied by Sri Radha. He is very skillful at playing the flute as he stands in a charming tribunga pose, bestowing mercy and kindness upon the bhaktas. Dhyana Chandra Goswami, Sri Gora Govinda Chandra, Smarana Paditati, Padati, 134 to 135. We're going to stop here. Um, so you see, um, pull it up. Let me go, pull it up. Uh, uh, Drone, keep going, keep going. No, 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 the other way. No, no. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, it's... what part are you looking for? Huh? What part are you looking for? I was looking for that next, the, the past, what you had read, what John had oh. just read. Oh, okay. Sorry. I thought you were going back. Right there, I'm going to pick up. Um, um, so first, let's stop right here. Let's stop right here. Um, there's not much that I can give you on these expressions. Um, I've read them many times. Unfortunately, I don't have any realizations that can go. I have nothing to offer has what we've heard, except it has a very cool, a wonderful feeling to hear them. But I have no qualification to speak further because I, that's, that's past my experience. But the call to Radha and Krishna in this manner is helpful. Um, it's personal. I just haven't, I haven't gone, I haven't gone to this space yet. <laughs> so that's as much as I can say there is that, so for what, for what we have going over today, are there any comments or questions? Well, I just want to say, excuse my Sanskrit because I, you know, I've always struggled with it. I still struggle with it. It's very hard for me, but yeah, excuse my mispronunciation. Well, I'll excuse yours if you'll excuse mine, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Ari. Thank you, Jay-Z. I, I did like that, um, uh, that there was this, um, you know, that we went through every single word of the Maha Mantra. And it was really, I've never seen it broken down that way, even though it was above my, <laughs> you know, my understanding really and ability to implement anything from it. I just, I thought it was a really beautiful way to break it down. And it gives us, <clears throat> you know, it gives us different things to meditate on just, you know, as we're thinking about maybe not during Japa, but as we're thinking about the, the Maha Mantra and this Yuga Dharma. And, you know, as, as we were talking about yesterday with, um, 
you know, the Yuga Dharma being this, you know, this is how we achieve liberation, but with the, for a devotee's liberation is really just going back to, it's going back to Godhead. It's even better than liberation. So this is kind of these meditations, these reflections that are associating with these different, with the different mantras or with the different words in the mantra are really giving us all of the nectar to help us understand that this is, this is our, this is the Yuga Dharma. This is our path. This is, this is everything. If we really absorb ourselves fully in the Maha Mantra and truly understand why we're doing it and the nectar that comes with it and the, the, the nourishment that comes from it, that, that, that really can relieve us from all suffering, which I, you know, noted in one of the earlier readings when you were reading Prabhu about suffering and that, you know, really the, the suffering is when we, when we turn away from our spiritual life and we accept material entanglements, but, but when we really start to engage ourselves in, in the spiritual activities and the, and Japa and engaging ourselves in deep Japa, um, and practicing japa in a thoughtful way, um, that, that it really does relieve Thank us of suffering. So, I, I like a point you just made that suffering is really when we turn away from Krishna. That is the only suffering that we really experience. Obstacles, calamities, you know, I call it we're in the spiritual gym, you know, pick up that 20 pound weight. <laughs> That's too hard for me. That's okay. You pick it up anyway, you know. So it's 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 testing me. It, it, it appears to be an obstacle, but it's a test. And as I pass that test, we go to the next test. So yeah, these these obstacles, these hurdles, these tests, these adversities, they enable us to see Krishna. And um and and that's wonderful. And it, it also And it makes us become a little more reflective and internal because you go through so many activities, but when it's tested, you get to see what's really in there, you know. Now, with these prayers, I will say that I, um, I use these meditations, I used to use a couple of them sometimes when I would think of uh, Krishna. One thing is that for me personally, I felt like I was being too familiar, that I, I didn't feel worthy of being able to pray in a certain way. I said, you know, don't get fake because Krishna knows you. Um, but a couple of them, I, I felt, um, yeah, this one, it says, hey, Krishna Ruchia, Bhavati May, oh, Krishna, please may I develop taste for you. I love that, you know? That's that's my prayer. So it's easy for me to say that. And uh, the first, hey Krishna, much to tell Akshar, Akshaya, oh Krishna, please pull my heart to you. And so in that way, you see that it's real. But I, I don't feel so wanted. Please show me your pastimes with your most beloved. Um, I, I don't think I'm over there yet. <laughs> yeah. So the things that I can, that I can pray for my heart, then I, I use them sometimes. Not even as I, I don't use them as I'm continuing my job, but before I pray chant or something, I may remember that and I. Or some days I'm meditating on Krishna, but um, it is a meditation, and that's pretty nice. Okay, we went over a lot of things. There must be something that you guys want to talk about. Don't make me think I'm just reading. I remember Ravindra Sarupabu. Um, he used to. He has a methodology that he uses when he chants that he focuses in and meditates on the Shashastakam prayers. Do you remember something like that from him? Of course, yeah. And yeah, I remember yeah. he, he That's, told Satchimara. It's, it's a correlation. Yeah. He said, Satchimara says, That's advanced. <laughs> he said, This is real people. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's I think meditation. that we were there together. I, I think we were there together. He was talking about that. You know, up at the up in uh, Stuyvesant Falls. Stuyvesant, yeah, yeah. 
Well, for Rabindra Shri Prabhu, it's always been a meditation for him because very early on in his devotional life, he um, got a realization about the Shishastik of prayers. So he began to dive deeper and it became a part it became a part of his, his, his meditation and part of his japa. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think it's when he, he felt, um, he felt uh, unworthy. He, he felt, as he, the more he chanted, he began to feel, you know, distress instead of bliss. And he couldn't understand it. And uh, his explanation was that he, he came to the understanding that he had a relationship with Krishna and he broke it. And Krishna didn't break the relationship. So he began to feel bad, you yeah. know, yeah. that yeah. he had, yeah. and, um, and he found that in the Namakarti, you know, that Nija Shava Shaktis in the second stanza. Um, so I'm so unfortunate I have no attraction for you. Um, so it's, it's his personal meditation, but over the years it has helped him with his with his japa and I just wish he'd hurry up and get that book out on the Shishastika. <laughs> he's writing now? Yes, he, he's been writing it for a while, but it takes him so long to write because he he constantly goes over something and goes over it again and well he does a lot of research. He researches a lot, yeah, yeah. Before he word as he, has to be, as he writes, so. he researches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mother Renika has her hand up. Hmm? Mother Renika, she has her hand up. Okay, I'm ready, Mother. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, so, um, happy Valentine's Day weekend to you too. Uh, <laughs> I love you too, Mother. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen you in person. Did you notice that? We have been, um, I've been in your classes for so long. I haven't seen you in person till now. So I finally, I finally get to see you when I deliver your flowers uh, for the Panchatatvas. So that's a that's a good feeling. Um, so here is my here is my understanding. And please correct me if I'm wrong. See, the whole point of this uh, chanting exercise is um, yes, it is taking uh, two hours for me to chant. Uh, the remaining 22 hours in the day, um, the whole point of this chanting is to make sure that I live a, a pious. Uh, a holy, um, a righteous, uh, uh, ethically pure life. Is that the point? Is that the gist of this chanting? Uh, you, you have trained us on the technique, the method, the methodology, uh, the mindset to have while chanting and how uh, you should be focused on chanting. And you also touched upon affectionate chanting and chanting with love. And today we have already seen like what every word means. Uh, so the whole point of this uh, this chanting exercise is to make sure the remaining 22 hours in the day, make sure you live a, a pure life. Is that is that the point? Part of it, yes, yes, and and it's not pious. It's not pious activity. This um, the point is that it is it is the it is transcendental. It is the the activity of the soul. To call out to the to the to the super self, when we're calling Radha and Krishna, <clears throat> we're we're trying to we're doing two things. We're glorifying them, but we're trying to reestablish a relationship. Can you imagine being in a relationship with someone and that relationship being broken, and the opportunity comes up where you can again come together and find out what happened? In some cases, it's almost like amnesia. I don't remember, but I've come to understand that we have a relationship. So there's different levels of that awareness of the relationship. But for this age, everything, just like you, we hear in the Gita about sacrifice, but the ultimate yadna, the ultimate sacrifice for this age is this mantra, you know? This is, is a, the Sankirtan movement is the ultimate yadna. And it simultaneously does so many things. It glorifies the Supreme Lord, but it also cleanses. That's why the Shishastika, Chaito Darpa, the Marginum, it cleanses the heart 
of all those nasty things. Like we have a gross and we have a settled body and that settled body, it's got so much bad stuff in it. We don't know, you know, it's been going on since time immemorial. So it cleanses it and it enables us to really like we hear the mind, we can begin to hear the direction of the Lord within the heart. Chaita Guru, the super soul. And the more we go and the, the more understanding we have of that relationship, the Sambanda, you know, then the, the, the practice of, of, of Krishna consciousness is, is Abhideya. You know, we, we have in motion that relationship with Krishna. We're serving him, we're inquiring, we're, we're calling him. And the goals will manifest, Priyojana, it will manifest. Eventually, we become lovers of God and we're back in the spiritual world. But whether we're there or here, we simply want to glorify Rod and Krishna. We want to shed this misunderstanding. We want to purify our consciousness so that we can see, as we see, Right, that our eyes become tinged with the salve of love, pray manjana surita bhakti valochanena. Yeah, then we can see all this is a manifestation of Krishna. We see all, everyone in relationship to him and we're serving him and we're reunited with our spiritual family. It all starts with chanting this mantra without offense. And before that happens, we do what Krishna asked Arjuna to do in the Bhagavad Gita. Because he's been taking him and our Dale in our you know short Gita snapshots. He's gone from pious, you know, work or Kamakanda work to, to karma yoga. And then he's gone to you know being detached, nice karma, karma yoga. And he's using his intelligence to bring him booty yoga to bring him to the point of bhakti. Udi and Bhakti, same thing like that. So ultimately, in the fourth chapter, Krishna tells Arjuna to try to learn the truth by approaching the spiritual master. Make that submissive inquiry, not challenging, and render service to, to that spiritual master. Those self-realized souls will impart knowledge unto you because they've seen the truth. The first thing that you're given by the spiritual master, once you become initiated, and sit in front of the fire. He says, what are the four regulated the rules? You say, no meat eating, no intoxication, no gambling, and no illicit sex. He says, and? He says, every day, chant 16 rounds daily, at least 16 rounds. He says, yes, and, av and avoid the 10 offenses. So this, the gift of the spiritual master, he gives you the holy name. He gives you that, he gives you that maha mantra and it's laced with all the blessings of the entire parampara comes with that mantra. You're now connected with Krishna, Brahma, Narada, Vyas, at, you know, you, Shil Prabhupada, you're connected. So this mantra is powerful. The association that will purify us is powerful. This is everything. This is the ultimate sacrifice of a person who's come to this material world and decides, okay, I, I, I wanna do something about myself and God. I wanna know more. I, this is the sacrifice to chant this mantra. And so it, it's different ways to go deeper and deeper and deeper. But ultimately we wanna chant with absorption. We wanna be absorbed. Just like when a lover is absorbed in thoughts of the beloved, when a mother is absorbed in the thoughts of her child, you know, just absorbed. We want to be absorbed in the thoughts of Radha and Krishna. We want to be absorbed. What are they doing now? We want to remember their pastimes. We don't want to see the tree. We want to see Krishna. We want to see everything as Krishna and Krishna's energies. And in that way, our vision, our life becomes changed. And it happens by chanting this mantra. So that may have been elaborate, Mother, but it's it's the best. <laughs> That's okay. The main thing for you is, is to read 434. You keep reading that verse in Bhagavad Gita about approaching the spiritual master and the qualifications that it takes. 
remember, Krishna wants to reveal, he, he will do everything to um, reveal everything to you. Why? Because you have something that Krishna wants. And the most important thing is that Krishna wants you. You think you want Krishna, he really wants us. But we got to get a little cleaned up. So take the instructions from your shikshas, you know, from your different teachers and try to find a, a submissive way. Once you're submissive, you'll hear everything. It's like the lights will get cut on. You're a smart lady, so you, you'll know. I want to see, I want to see your service attitude. I didn't say service because you can do service. You're always, I want to see your service attitude just begin to bl blossom. Yeah, I can't change overnight. Overnight, you cannot like uh, be a different person. So everything takes time. Uh, so okay. the way I'm looking at this mantra is make some small behavioral changes and try to be as nice as you can be to people around you and not uh, not be sharp and like I have my own uh, ways of. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so small changes in behavior. That is how I am looking at the mantra, gist, the gist of the mantra. Not simply chanting, but reflect that chanting behavior in the in the remaining 22 hours of the day. Is okay, that look at the mantra is none different from Krishna, because it isn't. It's Krishna. We have a couple more questions. Okay, okay. I'm ready. Um, we have uh, Mother Manju. She has her Hare hand. Krishna, Mother. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, I just want to uh, thank you for reading that letter. It reminded <laughs> me of the, my honeymoon time with Krishna consciousness. I, that was the best, you know, that I kind of uh, fell in love with chanting. And uh, I couldn't have said anything uh, any better than the devotee wrote the letter. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Mother. You remember, it was such a sweet time for us, you know. We, 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 would, we would be crowded in, 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 the, in the room with the deities. We'd be crowded on the third floor. It was a very special time. And um, we were just chanting and chanting. It was so nice. I so appreciate it. And, uh, and then the prasadam was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Those hot pancakes were great. Anyway, thank you, Mother. Thank you, Prabhuji. Yeah. It looks like Mother Shobharate. She's Oh, good. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Um, today, Hare I Krishna. just uh, want to show my appreciation to all these devotees. The timing just was not right for me, and I wasn't able to listen to everything from the very beginning. I want to show my appreciation to those devotees who make it possible to have this association online and then to be able to go back onto YouTube and uh, watch it over again because I miss this superb letter that everybody is talking about and I cannot wait to go back and listen to it. Uh, and I really, really have to appreciate uh, everybody who makes it uh, possible. Um, I, I came at the very end and I, uh, the one word that stuck with me from, from the reading was Ocean of Shastra. It, uh, the very last prayer that was read, um, it, it was from meditations from the ocean of Shastra. There is just so much, so much. There is just, there is oceans of material that we need to read and study and it's all available to us. And uh, um, that was, that's one thing that is um, stuck in me. Um, just wanted to uh, acknowledge that. And just one point about what Renuka was saying is, um, if we become a good devotee, then we automatically become more ethical, more pious, more, but it's not always true the other way around. If we are always ethical, <laughs> pious and stuff, we may not become good devotees, but if we are a good devotee, we will be pious, we will be ethical, we will be good people, we will not hurt others. And uh, so that was just one of the realizations I got from, from your answer. Thank you, Prabhu. Mother, I love your clear voice of intelligence. I tell you, you always remind me of a mother, you know? You, you speak like the, uh, like the old mothers I used to, you know, I used to remember mothers being so wholesome and kind and knowledgeable. 
and you you make me remember that. Um, the fact that you couldn't join us today, you know, you don't always any explanation, but I can tell you one thing, you know, we suffered because we didn't have you here to read. <laughs> you, you're so articulate with that beautiful Sanskrit and, and that you can read. So anyway, but that's okay. We muffled through it. And uh, we look to be back on your post next week. It's, Thank it's you so much. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Prabhu. I wanted to say something real quick on these prayers um, by Gopal Guru Goswami. Um, back in the mid 2000s, Sachinandana Maharaj, he developed these Japa retreats um, and they were very special. And I think it was at that time these prayers were introduced. Mm -hmm. the retreats, I mean, they really opened the doors to the holy name for so many of us. Um, you were you were you went in kind of that first initial round to those retreats a little bit later, and um, I remember these prayers being introduced. And uh, as you said, they are, they they can be very very helpful. Um, I find them to be helpful, um, especially through chanting. Sometimes we may find ourselves spacing out, start our minds start drifting. Um, and we need to attach it to something. Um, and these prayers allow us to attach ourselves to, uh, to Radha and Krishna in, in, the, in the chanting of the Maha Mantra. At least I found this to be true. I mean, one of them is, you know, um, oh, Krishna, you know, you, you, you're meditating on pulling Krishna closer to yourself. And when we're chanting on beads, we, we're taught to chant in a way which we hold the beads in such a way in which when we, we go to the next bead, we're actually pulling that bead closer to ourselves. So when we're chanting, you know, Krishna, you know, please come closer to me. Please, please pull yourself, I wanna pull you into my heart. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a visual connection that keeps us from sometimes spacing out, meditating on the sweetness, you know, please reveal your sweetness to me. Um, mm. and, and there's so many of them, please purify my heart to allow yourself to come. All, all these things can only be um, uh, benefits. And as you said, you know, very helpful in uh, developing attachment and focus, you know, through our chant. So the two hour period of chanting, whether we break it up at different points throughout the day, we do it in one, in one slot, um, you know, can, can be long for, for, for many of us. And, and I said, the mind can, can wander. These can be good. I think we can make these available. I have, I have the printout of it um, at home. I can print some out and leave it at the temple for people that want to come. Um, maybe we can, we can get a link and put it up for people next week if they want to use it. Um, uh, I found it to be very helpful. And that was something that Maharaj, I think, introduced to us at these Japa retreats. It was. I only use a couple of them and I don't use them in my job. I use them like in between and I spend time like, you know, as I, it's easy for me to beg, to pre, please pull me closer to you. You know, it's easy for me to say that because I want to go there. I want to go closer to Krishna. So um, I want him to give me shelter. I want to taste the sweetness of his holy name because it's so funny. The holy name is just, it's so sweet. I mean, I haven't really tasted sweetness, but I've tasted something before, and not often, <laughs> you know. And it's and it's amazing. So, and it's impetus to keep chanting, to keep serving, to keep. See, we're constantly bombarded to think we're other than Krishna's servants, which is, you know, it's our mind and our false conception of self, they just constantly make an ass of us. And, and we're surrounded with all these different situations, which um, we fortify the illusion that we're the controllers, that we're the doers, that we're the center of everything. And this is all part of our, our God project. And, you know, Arjuna, asked a question, you know, what is it that causes us to act sinfully? And again, it's, it's less only. 
you know, it's born with the contact of the motive, born from the motive passion. And so this, that's what we're dealing with, passion and ignorance. So we have to be lifted up. The scriptures lift us up. And ultimately, it's so funny when I read the Bhagavad Gita, I'm always thinking, yeah, but we need the holy name. And then the holy name enables us to hear things. It is, don't forget the purifying agent. It cleans us up. We chant to become purified so that we can hear from the right perspective, see things properly, and serve with the right attitude, affecting our consciousness, because our consciousness is so, so polluted. So it's, it's nice. And um, I think the more we talk about it, that's why I'm always stopping, because you're chanting. I want to hear from you. That's why I loved what you were saying, Isrona. But we need to talk. Remember, Krishna says the thoughts of his devotees dwell in him. Our lives are fully surrendered into his service, and they derive great satisfaction and even bliss by always um, conversing with, other, with one another about him. So it's, it's sweet. It keeps us focused, Krishna. Okay, enough for me. Yeah, can I ask, uh, right. Jonah, where anyway. would that be posted? Because I did envision printing that out. And while I'm chanting, look at each word and, and you know, take those realizations in. I, I was envisioning doing that. Where, where would you be posting it? For the link, you mentioned the link. You're, you're muted, Prabhu. Sorry. Sorry. No. Sorry. I know we got we to find it and then we can post it in the, maybe the link in the uh, chat next week. Um, okay. So, yeah. We can you know, Google it also. And we can probably Google it. Isn't it I in did. the book, the Namrahasya book? It is in the book. Yes. Yes. The book. Um, yeah, you can share the PDF file, right? Yes. Uh, I don't know if I can do that in the chat. Um, but even still, to, to having it right there in the book, you know, you have to hold it open. It can be a little clumsy. Um, but I think if you Google it, you'd be able to find it. I, I just didn't do that during this session. No. Anyway, John, he'll yeah. get it to you. He'll get it to you. OK. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Also put it on the WhatsApp app, Japa WhatsApp, WhatsApp app. That yeah. Japa yeah, we can do that. We can do that. OK. Thank you. Hare Krishna. And I learned about tolerance today, that tolerance develops humility. <laughs> that Thank you, Mother. <laughs> she said so, in, the, in the text. I, um, I thank all of you. Um, I thank you for your time and your help. You're my good association, you know. Thank you again. Vancha Kampa Trubius Cha, Kripa Sindhu Thank you very much, Prabhu. Thank you, thank you very much, Prabhu. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.